So look at this pretty sight this morning. It is uh, Thursday, October 15th, 2020, and I decided to take a shower. Uh, <laughs> Um, if you watched yesterday's video um, of Joe and I driving around, one of the things that um, I decided to do is stop off at the Mountain Equipment Co-op and see if they had any um, camping shower wipes. Um, I think people, when they go camping and they don't have access to running water or shower, they use these wipes to um, wipe down their body as a, as a substitute for showers. And I've been using sort of towels and sponges and things like that. And, and I was wondering whether or not like some of these products, uh, I was reading the reviews and things like that. And some people were like, I feel fresh. It feels like I, you know, it took a shower, a real shower <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, I would really like to take a real shower. Uh, so here's the backstory. With all these things that are um, in me right now, or that's coming out of me right now, I have something called uh, a porta cath that is installed up here, which really hasn't given me any problems whatsoever. So the reason for the porta cath is um, it's going to administer the the chemotherapy medicine to me, but they're also able to draw blood from it so that they don't have to poke me around. I haven't really shown you, but I've had like different bruises um, because um, they've been poking around and getting blood and IVs and stuff like that. And uh, the porta cath anyway um, would eliminate the need to go looking for veins and things like that to poke around when they need to draw blood. Um, so that's those are two reasons for the porta cath. One is to be able to draw blood because it's already there's access there, but also to be able to deliver the chemother chemotherapy medicine. Uh, still doesn't roll off the tongue. Kind of nervous about it, but um, so that's number one. That's the porta cath, and then there is the this draining tube that I keep talking about, where I've been jaundiced um, because there's been excess bile bile that's been um, stored up in my body. My body hasn't been able to get rid of the excess bile and therefore I've been jaundiced and there's kind of a toxic environment in my body right now because of all this bile that's been built up in there and they're, first they tried to put in a stent this way to be able to open up enough of an opening for the bile to be able to flow through um, because the mass um, that is in my pancreas is uh, blocking the ability for my body to be able to um, process the bile that way. So the second way has been this um, other way, which is to have this drainage tube that has been installed, and it could, it could. My understanding is that it can, and maybe at some point start doing its own thing eventually by having it capped, which is what happened last Friday. But it's, it always sounded like that was an eventuality as opposed to something that is um, supposed to be happening right now. So I think I have talked about the fact that they had capped it off and I was sort of wondering about why that is. And uh, so that was last Friday. And by the time um, a few days rolled around. I saw some leakage around my dressing and that started hurting because there was some irritation with with the opening in the bile and all this kind of stuff. So um, I had put the external bag back on and I've been draining that way, continue to drain that way. Um, but um, because of this whole thing going on on my right hand side and it's I'm not supposed to get it wet, it's I've been, I've been, I've been told that it's like having a cast, like I could wrap everything up and, and take a shower. But I mean, I've heard different things from different people. I think the thing that is generally recommended is sponge bathing. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't aware, I guess, that this was going to be a thing. So you take something for like taking a shower for granted. 
So I went from taking regular showers to going, oh, okay, I have to figure out, you know, a more, um, a less efficient way to clean myself. And the reality is, like, I enjoyed showers. I <laughs> um, was, it was just some time to myself and I would think things through and I would like to, the water on my skin, all these kinds of things. Like, I, I enjoyed showers and all of a sudden it was not, uh, not something um, that was recommended to do. And even if I were to, I had to go through this whole rigmarole in order to do that. So, uh, but that said, I do miss taking showers. And um, I just decided this morning that I will um, plastic tape myself all the all the all the the contraptions and all the things that should not get wet. I had some waterproof tape, which maybe the tape itself is waterproof, but if it comes off, if it peels off, then <laughs> I don't know how good that is. Um, so I took some plastic bags that I thought would be waterproof and sort of taped them all over my body. And um, pretty much as soon as I got into the shower, things started peeling off. So I just quickly washed my hair as quickly as I can and got soap in my eyes or shampoo in my eyes. So <laughs> there's that now. And it was just um, not the experience <laughs> that I was I was hoping it would be. I didn't I knew that it wasn't going to just be, you know, me standing underneath the shower head and relaxing and just, you know, leisurely being able to kind of like you know, wash and have um, go through my whole routine because that's the other thing too. Like I have a shower routine that that I like and it's comforting and soothing and stuff. And yeah, so um, wasn't able to do any of that because as soon as I stepped into the shower, I can feel things beginning to peel off. And I tried to <laughs> cover half of my body with the shower curtain and all that kind of stuff. And now that I'm wet, um, I am going to wash my hair and wash my hair really quickly. And again, got shampoo. <laughs> oh my God, it was a mess. It was a bit of a, it was a, it was a, it was a comedy of sorts. It's, it's like, this is the kind of stuff that you write, you know. In fact, uh, this might be, I don't know, could be an interesting movie strange so um anyway so I, the reason why i decided to take the shower this morning is because i do have a appointment with the nurse's clinic um in a couple of hours and i figured if i you know <laughs> shit up too much um they probably wouldn't be happy with me but they will clean me up and um dry me off and everything like that and i would have also gotten a shower too but the shower was not cracked up <laughs> what it was cracked up to be. What is it, what's the what's the saying? I don't know. But I was hoping that it would be uh, a little less comedy of errors than it ended up being. So that's that's my story for my red shampoo eyes on top of my jaundiced yellow eyes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, um, the other thing that, um, happened yesterday, I haven't talked about it, um, not because I've been keeping it, just because I think there's so much that's going on, goes on at any given time that I'm, you know, maybe forget to just include some stuff. So last week when I went in to, um, see my oncologist, Dr. Alamova, um, the day before, a few days before that, I got a call from the, the geneticist, a genetic, genetic counselor from Mount Sinai, and their work is in trying to connect um, any genetic um, connections between um, cancers and um, certain kinds of cancers and genetics and genetic mutations. I'm not versed at all in genetics except to understand that there is a genetic component to 
cancers and uh, there are certain things there um, my understanding with pancreatic cancer there isn't a whole lot of that's known um, about um, its um, genetic makeup or again I'm, I'm sort of making up these terms I'm, I'm not quite sure but my understanding is that there is little less understanding around pancreatic cancer than there are of other cancers um, but they have been able to um, identify a few genetic mutations that could uh, a help potentially with treatment because they could gear the treatment toward um, these uh, genetic mutations um, and number two um, they if it turns out that um, there are other family members who have cancer or there are family members who may want to test for the cancers they could see uh, whether or not there is some consistency in the gene mutations that I have um, and others who um, have this disease have and there might be some early predictors like that kind of thing um, and, 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 lo and for larger science uh, for people to have a better understanding of uh, pancreatic cancer and its uh, genetic, con genetic connection I guess right um, again that is my very high level understanding of it and so I was asked to participate um, it's not a study it's, it's not research it's 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 an ongoing initiative I'm gonna say um, and uh, spring had um, from Mount Sinai had called me up a couple weeks ago asked me if I wanted to participate and I said that I would um, First of all, if there's any way that I, in my own small way, can contribute to a larger understanding of this disease, I think that's fantastic. Secondly, if it does somehow show that um, there are some genetic variations um, that can be seen um, in, in my genetics, then perhaps it can also help with my treatment as well. So, you know, and it's, it's just... just giving blood and giving permission for them to be able to look at it um, to compare it to 91 different um, known cancer related gen genes something like that but then there's uh, 22,000 genes <laughs> um, in within within every single human or something like that so I mean it's it's an area I clearly don't have any understanding of, but the the high level part of it is that it could it could possibly help me, and it can also help again from the larger perspective. Um, the uh, at some point perhaps um, for for my little contribution to a better or uh, understanding of what uh, pancreatic cancer and its um, genetic connection. And also, um, this doesn't really apply to me because I don't have children or siblings, but that um, they could have um, tested family members as well to see whether or not um, they could see any consistencies um, in their gene profile um, that may um, help in some ways. Anyway, so uh that's something that i participated in i agreed to participate in and the blood was drawn last week uh, i got a call yesterday and um you know the spring the genetic counselor she let me know um what to potentially expect that um it, you know something can come by positive which um will provide more information about my particular situation it can come back inconclusive um, in that, um, again, there's like so much that's still unknown. There are, and then there are certain, um, yeah, so the, my understanding is that there's an inconclu inconclusive part where there are a few things that were shown, like a few mutations, I guess, that came back, but they don't have enough information to make any kind of a, um, They, it doesn't it doesn't say anything it's just data it's just data and they're not able to make sense of it at all because they're so that so that it's inconclusive so 
I was hoping that um, and there was a very, very small chance uh, that th that I might have had the BRCA1 or the BRCA2 um, gene mutation, and that could um, be used toward treatment. Um, BRCA1 and BRCA2 apparently have um, some kind of relationship with breast cancer, and they have been able to um, see that some folks who get pancreatic cancer also have the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutation. But the one thing that she did say yesterday, though, was that this was a blood, um, it was, it was, it was taken, it, it was taken from blood, and it's possible that the mass itself, or the tumor itself, can have its own gene mutation. So, and that, that in its, in, in, the, the tumor itself can have potentially this BRCA1 or the BRCA2 gene mutation, in which case um, there may be um, a better chance of the tumor responding to treatment. Again, I believe that is the understanding of it. Um, I, I guess like once, you know, people start asking questions about family history and things like that, um... I started to think that I actually do have a lot of folks who have passed of cancer in my family. Um, my mother's side, um, her brother passed, I think, like rather young, um, probably in his like early 40s. I don't know what kind of cancer he had. I actually don't know what my mother's father passed away from, but he passed away actually quite young. Um, my dad recently in the last five years passed away from cancer in Japan. Um, my family is very close, but this is the kind of stuff that we don't talk about. So I have, I don't have a whole lot of information about my father's cancer. And maybe this is a story for another time. Um... And his three sisters, I, th I believe he has three sisters, or had three sisters, I think they all passed from cancer even before he did. Um, and, um, and I guess uh, there was a part of me that was like, okay, with all this family history with cancer in my family, that maybe there is some kind of a shared genetic thing um, that could maybe show itself, you know, through something like this. But it turns out things were inconclusive. So, um, so the contribution is to this larger science and better understanding of pancreatic cancer. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, in the future, um, my contribute my little tiny <laughs> genetic um, contribution goes toward um, a better understanding of this disease and maybe even a cure. How good? How amazing would that be? So, um, Today I have, um, oh, <laughs> as you saw yesterday um, in, in my Come Along With Me video, Come Along With Us video, I went to try and pick up a uh, air conditioner that I had sourced off of Kijiji and the guy wasn't exactly forthcoming with all the information. Um, there were some there were some pieces missing from it. It uh, had a leg missing and I had asked him if everything was in good working order. He said 100%, everything is great. Um, and told me that they had only used it for a summer and a half. Um, but when we got there, I mean, it was like yellowed. It was like, you know, when, when white plastic yellows. I don't know how long that takes for that to happen, but I don't know that, uh, that, a, that a summer and a half would do that. Um, and I mean, it's, it sounded like it was working well, but the, um, the piece that is supposed to be the plug to the drain 
um, of the air conditioner that was missing. And even though this particular unit is supposed to be um, drainless, I, my, my understanding is that it, it recirculates the, the whatever moisture it gets from the air into the air so it doesn't require drainage but he was saying that his unit drains a lot and um so i don't i don't i don't know what um that anyway so he had he needed there's this piece again this is like i have drainage issues like i have drainage issues with myself there's this drainage issue with this air conditioner and it was missing a tube and um we're like well this we can't i mean this isn't any good for us i mean it's not complete um this is like you didn't let us know about any of these things and he's like well i thought this and i'm like well you assume that you never asked me anything but um if you're going to be selling something like this um you should say like it's missing a it's missing a leg it's missing a tube or whatever so that was yesterday and that was um disappointing that we weren't able to make that deal i don't know honestly if i've ever walked away from a deal before um that i had set up on kijiji because it was misleading or it wasn't complete so i mean after all these years it's it's kind of interesting that that's happened now but i had um already been speaking with another seller who had another similar unit that he was selling on Kijiji but uh, for a little bit more money and so you know we're watching our watching our budget and if we thought that if we can get a unit with a higher BTU for less money and it was the same brand why not but it turns out this there was a reason for it so um, I have set up, um, the, we're going to be picking up this other air conditioner this morning because they have turned off the air conditioning unit in our uh, building as of yesterday and um, it's, it's, just quite, it's quite warm, it's like 76, I don't know what that is in Celsius. I wish my thermostat actually showed it in Celsius because I don't even really know what 76 is apart from the fact that 76 for me to sleep is too warm um, and 76 just generally I like to keep it um, just during the day around like 72 so um, and then when I sleep I like to keep it sub 70 so yesterday um, I set up a, a fan Last night I set up a fan in our room and everything like that, but the fan was noisy and it wasn't cooling things. And I woke up in the middle of the night and it was just too warm. So I ended up coming out into the living room, opening the windows um, until construction started <laughs> at 6 o'clock. So didn't really get the best sleep and I did end up staying up a little bit later than I was expecting because I was watching the two baseball games yesterday. Um, the Dodgers uh, came out hot um, first inning with like 12 runs or something like that. So the rest of that game was pretty crazy in that they had to get through like eight and a half more innings <laughs> with this giant lead and they ended up winning at the end. And um, and it looks like uh, Houston was able to squeak out a win as well. So more baseball tonight on TV. Um, I was really hoping that Tampa Bay could clinch it. Hopefully they'll be able to do it tonight. Um, so anyway, so I stayed up a little bit later than I generally would. And I had a little bit of energy to do that. I didn't... Um, I was feeling pretty okay the last couple nights I wasn't feeling that hot so um, when I was about to go to sleep I was really tired and just not feeling great so I had gone to sleep a little bit earlier the last two nights last night stayed up a little bit watched the game went to sleep but then didn't sleep that great one of these days it'll all come together and I'll be great <laughs> so 
Um, that's the update for today. Um, we There might be a ride along, potentially. I am going to the nurse's clinic. Can't bring you into the nurse's clinic with me. But um, I might ride along. I have, I'm have i getting a ride. Oh, and the other thing that I ended up doing is yesterday and the day before, I guess it was Prime Day on Amazon, and I purchased a... Um, a stationary but it's on a bike but it's it's like a like a pedal crank thing then you can like sit on the sofa or sit on a chair whatever and then have it underneath a desk or just underneath you whatever and um, to do just some exercises because I'm not getting as much walking out and about as I do as I'm used to and that concerns me a little bit and I do, uh, I walked a little bit yesterday, just a tiny bit. Notice like how I got slower, how much slower I am, and how much more tired I get. So if I maybe do the pedaling, um, and had good reviews, this thing. So if I do the pedaling every day, like maybe it'll help me with my stamina and my, and my fitness as I go through what I'm going through. So that's the update. Holy moly, can I ever talk? Like 26 minutes, Jesus. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> um, so that's it. And if there's anything more, there will be more. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>